So, do you want to know all the process at the moment to buy a property, whether it's in Cabo or Mexico? Stick around because on this video, I'm going to provide you all the information that you need to know about it. Welcome one more time to this channel. Today we are going to interview Saira. She is an attorney and she is going to help us to provide all the information that we need to know about the closing process. Okay, she has a company and she is right now here. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much for your time. And thank you so much for having me. So we are going to talk about a little bit about you so to get to know you and then you can help us to know what they are your services here. Okay? Of course. Okay, how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. I'm very honored to be here with you. Um, it's a great pleasure to be on Being Cabo thank and you help much. you with all the information that you can use for this process. Perfect. Well, right now we want to know where are you from and when, where did you study your career and what attracted to you to be here in Cabo right now? So I am from the Yucatan Peninsula. I'm okay. from the other side of the country. I was born in Merida, Yucatan. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the university in the UNID, the University Inter-American University for the Development. Okay. And originally that was not my first choice of career. I <laughs> How did you get involved in that? <laughs> So I, I think like what I would like to do is helping people in general. Originally, I was going to be a doctor. Turns out that I can't stand blood. Okay. So yeah, very, very problematic if you want to be a doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so the next uh, career that it occurred to me that could be helpful to people, probably not in what we're doing right now, um, was law school. So okay. I started law school as an alternative after leaving med school. Okay, yes. I think the, the what is the similar in the two careers, you need to memorize a lot of things. Yes, you, right? need, you have to read a lot and memorize a lot of things either for pharmaceutics and the body and or the, or the laws or the okay, many, many perfect. laws that we have. So you have a great memory, that's for sure. <laughs> I'd like to believe that. <laughs> what the, what do you, what? Do you feel attracted to come here? Why you you are here right now in Cabo? So I came to Cabo originally with uh, the company that I was working for. That's uh, I came for work. Okay. And during that path, well, our interest didn't align anymore, and I decided to to fly solo and try it on my own. And it's been amazing. Cabo is beautiful. The people, it's beautiful, and you get to see very different scenery from where I'm from. Okay, perfect. So right now you told me you own a company, right? I do. Okay, I want to know a little bit how you get uh, the courage to own a, a company here in Cabo. So um, I think quality in the service that is provided to clients okay. could be better. Sad, sad that it's a common thing in Mexico, but we have a lot of room for improvement okay. uh, in, in service and customer care in specific. So with that spirit in mind and the background that I have doing this, what we do, that it's the treatment of foreigners in Mexico, comes the idea of making the process of establishment here just a little bit easier. Easier, okay. So if you're still gonna find uh, challenges along the process, but we're trying to make everything as structured, as fast, as easy as possible. That's the whole spirit of it. Okay, perfect. So um, I want to know a little bit about the service you provide in your company. Okay, um, so the company is focused mainly on foreigners. Okay. What what does it mean? Any person that want that it's not Mexican that wants to come to Mexico for anything, call it to work, to live, to invest in properties, to establish a company. In that okay. in that spirit, um, the company focuses on mainly real estate okay. uh, purchases of foreigners through a fideicomiso or a bank trust through a Mexican corporation that they might want to incorporate for a bigger business or all the other items. They can might not want to come to buy a property, but just to come and establish and 
I don't know, put a shipping company, a nail salon, or, okay. or something. Okay, it's like not that. just you don't provide just services for at the moment to close a property. So you uh, provide more services for a company if you want to open a company. Yes, like a uh, lawyer stuff. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> much. Stuff. So <laughs> it's it it is conceived as a legal concierge. Okay. So. Everything that we can help you with during that process of coming to Mexico, even if it's not within our range of services, we have a, a bunch of commercial allies, great commercial allies that can help you on immigration, on accountancy, all the things that you don't think that you might need when you move to Mexico. Okay, perfect. That's beautiful. Um, there is anything special that made the difference between you and escrow company or the notaria? What is the role that you play on that? That is, a, that is a great question. I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding on what a closing agent does. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is super important that you ask this and that we get to explain it. In Mexico, the notaries are pretty much an authority of its own. Okay. And the notary pretty much, the only thing that it does is to give public faith of an act. Okay. Call it a purchase, the establishment of a will, um, any sort of contract that has to go through a public faith and does the, the, the process of registration with the, with the corresponding agencies. The notary is not your personal lawyer. Okay, he can yes, take yeah. care of, of the process for you. However, if there is a problem within the parties, it's important to mention that the notary is impartial, so he cannot take sides. And that's the importance of having a, a closing uh, lawyer. And the escrow is pretty much a custodian account where funds for transactions are held and disbursed according to a number of instructions once the time is right. So Perfect. our role is to coordinate all that. Everyone, so Every make the process <laughs> more easy and effective, right? Yes, yes. Perfect. Um, I have a question. For example, if uh, a Canadian person wants to buy in Cabo or in Mexico, there is any difference? Yes. Um, so, according to our constitution and laws, we have a difference between the types of territory that it's in Mexico, in specific when we're talking about purchase from foreigners. We're talking about the restricted zone, that it's all the piece of land that is within 50 kilometers from shores okay. inland and 100 kilometers from borders inland. Okay. So, if you buy in any restricted area that can be Cabo, and for that purpose, anywhere in Baja, um, okay. Puerto Vallarta, any, anywhere that it's close to the ocean, okay. it is a restricted zone. And we need to make a fideicomiso. At a lack of a better way to explain it, a bank trust. Okay, a bank trust. Perfect. So for that purpose, you need to ask for a permit to the Foreign Affairs Ministry and do a number of steps for the foreigner to be able to acquire. However, if you do this in mainland, for example, Mexico City, Mexico as you City. asked, it's a simpler process. You still buy land or properties directly. The only thing that you do is to uh, provide a notice to the Foreign Affairs Ministry saying that you are not going to invoke the um, defense of your country. So you are considered Mexican for all the purposes for that property in specific. But you don't have to do a permit, you don't have to do a fideicomiso, so your process is faster, easier, simpler. Okay, perfect. I mean, maybe this is uh, not the right question, but I want to, to ask. Um, for example, if I, I am from Venezuela, right? And I want to buy a property in, in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. I have the opportunity to become Mexican or not? Having a property in Mexico helps you with the establishment of your residency. Okay. However, it does not help you precisely with the citizenship uh, per se. Okay, but with if I own a property, I have the opportunity to become a permanent resident. Yes. Okay. So all the Mexican consulates around the world has its own guidelines for this, but one of the um, one of the ways to apply for temporary or permanent residency it's through having a real estate in Mexico. Uh, okay. You have to pay attention to the guidelines because it has a minimum value of the property and this is updated every year um, okay. according to the uh, minimum wage in Mexico but that's pretty much the benefit that you can have from from getting a property anywhere in in the country 
Okay, perfect. Okay, if I want to open a company here in, in Cabo, but as a foreigner, like me, uh, I am from Venezuela, mm -hmm. but I have here in Mexico, uh, let's say one year. Can I open a company here in Mexico? Yes, of course. We've had clients that have come, have never come to Mexico, but want to come and establish a company. Okay. Before and sometimes the times that we met them at the signing of their company, it's the first time that they put a foot in the country. Okay. So you don't have to be living in Mexico. You can, as a foreigner, to uh, incorporate a, a Mexican company for almost any purpose. Okay. There are some activities that are restricted for Mexicans only. Uh, for example, law firms. Law firms okay. don't get to have foreign investment in their equity. Okay, perfect. Um, how long it, it takes if, if I want to open a company? It, it is a difficult process or do you make this process easy or how, how it works? We try. We try. <laughs> <laughs> we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, it isn't that much of a complicated process. However, you do require guidance in order to do that. What do we need to establish a company? We need a couple of names, possible names for the company that mm -hmm. we or the notary uh, request. Uh, general information from the shareholders, passports, birth certificates, utility bill, um, more general information, marital status, and it's, it's relatively easy, that part. Okay. Then we get into the complex system of okay. tax in Mexico, okay, which is okay. a completely different story. Perfect. Um, mm, mm, mm. In your company, I, I know you mentioned the different um, service you provide. Uh, beside that, the, the uh, owning a property, uh, purchasing a property, or whether if it's uh, opening a new company, what else uh, you provide? I, I know we asked that, that in the in the beginning, but I need that like to show all the benefit with you, mm -hmm. so they can understand. So the the company um, was created in the aims to be an integral solution for for foreigners. That means that our main thing right now, it's real estate and corporate. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we work hand by hand with teams of bilingual accountants that knows not only the Mexican tax system, but also the US and Canada tax system. Um, we provide services to developers okay. that are coming to establish and want to uh, request all the permits that they need to start their beautiful developments here in Cabo. Uh, same thing with sellers, uh, it's not only for you to buy, it's also for you to sell. We help them with the, mm, okay. um, with the reduction of capital gains, uh, we can help you with all the immigration process uh, once the time is right for, for that. So we're trying to really provide all the services that foreigners may need and we're still learning of what our clients need along the way. So we're still incorporating new services to the company. Okay, perfect. So, how long have you been here in Cabo? In Cabo, I have been, in this October is going to be three years. Three years, beautiful. So, how do you like it so far? It's <laughs> difficult because I've always had been blessed enough to live in beautiful places. Okay. My state is beautiful and then I get to live in Playa del Carmen for a good, good four years uh, before moving here. I also lived in Canada for a couple of years. Cabo. I don't know if I could say that it's my favorite place, but I really like it a lot. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, taking road trips outside the city, going to the waterfalls, going to the dunes. It, it's, it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fun things to do here that probably are not as advertised. And, but I'm liking it a lot. How do you like it? Oh, I do love it. <laughs> I mean, I came here for the first moment just for vacation. And then I saw the opportunity here to earn my business. And I say, you know what, this is a great place to live. Even if it's just having fun or making business, it's like yeah. just perfect. So, yeah. I think Cabo, it's a place that it gives a lot. A lot. And it gives you in the same measurement that you give to the place. Of course. As long as you put all your energy, effort in whatever you want to do. If it's just having a good time, having yeah. a vacation or actually making a business in here, you're gonna find it yeah. and it's gonna be good. It's like provide good quality of life, you know, yes. quality in everything, food, beautiful beaches and beautiful weather, all the culture that we are having here, like 
knowing a lot of people around the world because this Hi. is a uh, like crazy like we have uh, Chinese people we have American Canadians Cubans um, yeah people from all around the world all around the world so all the cultures are right here in yeah Canada. yeah yeah and um, well we, we we our conversation goes <laughs> a little out of the the purpose but this is a good value information that you need to know um, if you are visiting here in Cabo, uh, for sure you will see all our words are true because this is an amazing place to visit. It is. So, and then, um, there is anything special that you want to share with us uh, and with our subscribers? Well, um, I think in the aims of our original topic, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that was the, the closing process, I think it's very important that you have a great team by your side. It's that, of course, a, a very trustworthy real estate agent that we know you have. <laughs> yes, thank you. And a great team with your lawyer as well. Of and course. those two has to team up. So if your realtor and your lawyer doesn't work hand by hand, well, your experience might not be as good. So we, we want to make sure that clients are well protected, that we are constantly helping our realtors, that we see as our allies for, for, for all this process, to be educated, to be updated, to be sure. aware of what part of the process are we. We are strong believers in uh, honesty and transparency with the clients and with the part of our teams that it's of course uh, realtors, notaries, appraisers, everyone. So yes. I think regardless of who you're choosing is for realtor <laughs> <laughs> or lawyer. <laughs> and um, the beauty of this is like we are <laughs> bilinguals. So yes, you yes. speak Espanol and English. So yes, yes, of course. You are protected. If you don't understand the process, you will explain everything yes. in English or Espanol. ¿verdad? Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else? I think, well, um, I think that's a question more for your viewers. Is there anything else, that the, any topic that you would like to talk uh, the, to talk about? You wanna hear more about the perspective from a seller, from a developer? If you already are a homeowner in Cabo, what struggles have you found? Are you airbnb -ing? Do you have any questions that you have not been able to resolve? I think. Yeah, of course, if you have any doubt or any specific topic that you want to talk about it, please let us know in the comments and we will create the entire video to talk about that topic, okay? Thank you very much for watching our video and I hope to see you again next time. Great job, guys. Thank you. With the closing process. <laughs> 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 it's okay. <laughs> so you can... I'm just... I'm sorry. <laughs> Good everything. <laughs> Music again. <laughs>